Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at Power Automate for desktop UI elements. UI stands for user interface. So we're gonna focus on two main features. One is to take a look at all these UI elements and the attributes and the values that come along with it. It is also called as a hierarchy structure. And it's very important to know this because once you understand this information, you can go and apply, which is part two, some actions to it. Because you may be familiar with things such as automation done using PowerShell scripts in the back end, but unfortunately, as citizen developers, we don't know how to do this. Now, with this knowledge, you can actually do that kind of automation, and I'll even show you a demonstration of it. So stick around because not only is this fun, it will make your life super easier. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started by creating a new desktop flow. So I'll come over here, I'll click on the plus new flow, I'll go ahead and give it a name, call it demo of UI elements, and I'll click on create. What's gonna happen is another window will come up and this is the studio piece. This is where we actually go and start putting some actions to do our robotic process automation piece, also known as RPA. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna look at is the UI inspection, please, because that is the way we can go and inspect and get all of the elements. And once we get the elements, we can actually see each and every attributes of it. And believe it or not, there's actually three ways to go and do this inspection. So the first place is we actually come over here. On the right side, you see this section, when you hover your mouse over it, it's called a UI elements. So when I click on it, and now if I click on this button immediately, this secondary window comes up. And this is where I can go and do inspect UI elements, all right? So this is the first way to go and do it. I'll go and close out of this one, get back into our studio. The second way to do it is don't quickly go and click on this first button, but actually click on the drop down. And now you see the UI elements. Again, when I go and click on it, this pop-up window comes up, but it saves us an additional click. It directly gets us into the element picker and the inspection piece over here. I'll go and close this off because I want to show you the last way as well. The last piece is you go to this top navigation, click on tools, and there you see inspect UI elements. And then again, the exact same window comes up. So the final destination for all three ways is this place, which is coming in and doing the inspection. But since there were three of them, I wanted to show you how it works. All right, so now that we are here, this is where I can go and do my inspection. So what I have over here is my normal desktop setup. This is basically all the desktop icons that I have, um, all the tasks that are running in the back end, all of this is going on. Now, the first thing you see in this inspection window is this local computer, and you will also see something similar. But check this out. The moment I go and click on this drop down, it has a quick refresh, which means it's going and doing a grab of everything you have running in your current situation, and it gives me this pull down. So let's take a look at what it gave me. First thing is this Google Chrome, and that is true because I actually have a browser running on the bottom over here, and that browser basically leads me to this documentation. So this Google Chrome is actually a service, this service of this application that is running. Let me go and close that, do a refresh, and when I do a refresh, you see that Google Chrome went away. So it's pretty neat that it's actually showing you real-time services that are running in your system. All right, so the next one is telling me is that I have a window open of an application called TechSmith Camtasia 2023. And that is true because I am using Camtasia to record this video. I actually have a window of that application open up in my secondary monitor. So it is active and therefore it is showing me that it's running. And if I go and expand on it, it gives me all of these other detailed attributes running in the back end. And this is pretty neat because say if you are in the developer side of things and you want to go and get all this information, everything is shown over here. Not just the application running, but in the UI interface of this window, all of these attributes is telling me what they are, what their names are. And if I go and select and expand each of them, it tells me at the attribute level. So now do you see what I meant by the hierarchy? When I was giving you the introduction, I said that there is actually a hierarchy of the UI elements. This is what I meant. So the hierarchy always stops at the top level, which is the local computer, then the next application, which in this case was my TechSmith Camtasia. Click on it shows me all the elements that are running in it, and then inside the elements, I can go and see all the attributes. This is what I meant by the hierarchy. 
and hierarchy shows you how in-depth the information is running. But let's take a look at a few other things, all right? So we saw that application running over here. There is another recorder piece that is happening. The recorder is the Camtasia recorder that is doing these recording videos. Next, I've got the taskbar secondary and a taskbar. Let's take a look at the taskbar first. So if I go and click on it, and if I expand it, it is telling me that all of these things are running over here. In the background, I've got the input classic style. I've got the task notification. These are all the additional things that are running in the back end. And let me show you what that is. So you see on the bottom right, these are all the icons and the buttons that are related to that taskbar. So let me move this over here to the right so we can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, first things I show is these hidden icons. You see these buttons over here, all of these fall under those hidden buttons. But I also have the speaker one. So check this out. If I go and click on that speaker, if I go and click on the clock, it goes and highlights that clock over there. Any notifications? Well, there's a bunch of them and also my co-pilot. So you see, this is real-time inspection of all the elements that are running on your desktop over here. But let's not stop over here. I'm gonna go and finish this up with my desktop icons. So on my desktop icons, it immediately gave me a list of all the icons that are running over here. So the first thing that if I go and hover on it, it's the recycle bin, like you see on the top left. I've also got Microsoft Edge, I've got my Chrome, the name of the Chrome, all these other Microsoft 365 applications that I have, which is Outlook, OneNote, both of them, uh, Road application, which is the one that I use, the Elgato, Microsoft Lists, and I've also got a temp folder and a Microsoft documentation. Every icon that I see on my desktop has been inspected and it shows up as an element under the desktop icons. And when I click on it, it is showing me all these attributes over here. Once again, the hierarchy is being displayed over here in this fashion. So now that I've shown you how this inspection of all the UI elements works, now let's focus on how we can actually build some actions upon this. So let's come up with a scenario. What I have over here are two things. There is a temp folder, which I'll go and grab it, move it over here, just because I can. And I have this word document. I call that as a test doc one and the file extension is docx. I want to automate the process where I can go ahead and take this document and move it over here in this folder. Not make a copy, move it over here. And I know what some of you IT professional people are thinking. You are thinking like, Psh, Daniel, that is easy. I can do that directly through the PowerShell script. And if you're interested, let me also show you how you can do that. Uh, let's come over here and I'll go and do a search for PowerShell, which is right over here. Go ahead and open that. The PowerShell window opens up. I'll go and go into my directly root directory and here is the script. It is move item. That is the actual function that we're gonna use. And then it goes directly to the desktop level, which is the desktop level we are in. Goes ahead and grabs this do Word document, which is right here. See, that test doc one. Yes, there is a space in between the test and the doc one, but that's fine. The PowerShell script can pick that up. And then the destination. The destination is, again, in the desktop, but in this temp folder. So if I go and click on enter over here, you will see that the Word document just disappeared, but now it's chosen it over here, right? So I can go and open this up, and it is over here. So yes, if you are an IT professional or somebody who is familiar with going ahead and creating these type of PowerShell scripts, go for it. Kudos to you. But if you are a citizen developer who has no clue about Windows PowerShell script, no clue about these type of move item functions, what is the source, what is the destination, what is the syntax, uh, and that doesn't fancy you, I will show you how to go ahead and replicate this using the RPA, the Robotic Process Automation System, uh, which doesn't require any line of code. That is what you and I are gonna build next. So I'm gonna click on this Add UI Element, and I'm gonna make sure I can hover it, perfect. Do what the instruction says, is click on the Control plus the left click of the mouse. So I'll go and now click on that, and the moment I do it, it shows me that in the desktop icons, I have selected the test doc one. That's my first element. And then the second one is going to be the temp folder. Went and grabbed that one as well. All right, so I'm gonna go and click on done over here just to make sure that it shows up. All right, so the first action we want is to open the temp folder before something can be actually dragged into it. So I'm just gonna go and do a search for click UI. And there you go, there's something called as click UI element in window. Let me click on it. Let me drag it over here and drop it. So what is that UI element? In this case, the UI element is that temp folder. See, when I click on it, it shows you that image. 
that's the one that I want. I'm going to go and click on select and now we got to decide the left click. Now keep in mind when we are opening up a folder it's usually a double click. So for the click type click on the drop down and select this double click. All right so the next property we have over here is called as the simulate action and that is for the scenarios where whatever specific click type that you need is not available in this drop down. In that case you can actually go and use the simulate action and you, and you see when I click on it the previous property disappeared. So use this at your own discretion. In our scenario over here, I'm gonna to toggle this off because the double click was working. Uh, so I'll go and click on save. Um, I'll go and click on my flow and we'll just do a really quick test of this one, all right? So I'll just go and bring this down a little bit and I'll go and click on the play. The first action is selected and you can see that the folder opens. By the way, at all this time, my hands were over here. I wasn't doing any clicking. Perfect, so the first action is good. So I'll go and close this up, go back into our studio piece over here, make it nice and big. And now I wanna put in an additional step, which is just the safe, which is just the cautious side of me doing it. And that is the weight. So I'm gonna go into a search for it first, it's just the weight. And I'm gonna select this weight for window content. And here's why I'm doing it. Cause there could be that one point where you'd clicked on that folder. And for some reason, it took a little longer for that folder to open. So I really want that RPA system to wait till that window is open. So we're gonna use this action, which is wait for window content, click on it, drag it, drop over here. And the first property is wait until window opens. And I'm gonna use that reference with the UI element, which is contains UI element. So I'm gonna wait on that. Next one is this property over here, which is check UI element state, toggle that on, all right? And for the UI element itself, which one is it? It was the temp folder that we selected, all right? So I'll go and click on that select. And then the state, what should be the state? The state is when the window opens up, that's the enabled one. So you leave that state as enabled and I'll go and click on save. Again, this is the cautious side of doing this, but this is also to make sure that you are ready for any type of production uses, especially the delays that are tied with it. Make sense? Good. All right, next action is to do a drag and drop. So let me do a quick search over here for drag. Perfect, it does fall under the UI automation click and now drag and drop this one over here uh, in our actions and this is the pop-up window so which is the ui element to drag this is the one which is the actual doc file so i'm going to put it over here select it and i'm going to click select again now the element to drop it in well that's going to be the temp folder so i'm going to go select that one and go and select again and i'm going to click on save so this is also a good time to do a test but before that i'll go and click on save uh, just to make sure that everything is working right. So let it save. Again, we'll make sure that the original windows are closed, which in our case is the actual temp folder. Um, I'll come back over here. Yep, I see it's all closed. So now let me just go and do a test. So I'll just click on run and uh, this will go and get minimized. Perfect, open it up, dragged the Word document in over there. But what I noticed was it hasn't closed. It minimized, but it did not close, which is correct because that action is missing. So let's go and add that action. Now, one of the tricks I'm gonna show you is leave this open over here because there's a very interesting action that you and I can use on this site. Uh, let me X out over here and I'm gonna do a search for close. And in the close, select this close window. It is under UI animation, but I'm gonna show you a different way to use it. Click on it, drag it, drop it at the bottom. And the first property is find window mode by UI element. I wanna change that to by title and or class. And then when I'm going to the window title, select the temp folder. Now, be mindful that this will only show up because we actually have our temp folder open. I'll show you by example. If I go and close this one, let me cancel this out, drag and drop the close window again. In the find windows by mode, if I go and select the title and class, when I click on this one, see, you do not see that temp folder. Why? Because it's not available right now. So I'm gonna cancel out of this one again open up that temp folder, leave it be, let it be open, go back into our studio, drag and drop this close window, change the find window by mode to title and or class, and then look for this temp folder. You should see it now, why? Because the temp folder is open. Select it and that's all. I'm gonna go and click on save. Again, this time I'll go and save it and we'll do the final run. And again, we gotta make sure that everything is as the RPA expects it. So this one was open, the file explorer, I'm gonna go and close it, right? Also, I need to make sure that the actual document is available. So let me open this up, drag this one outside, 
close it. Everything is good. So I'm going to come back in, click on run. Hands are up, open it up, word document are put in, and even the temp folder closed. Everything happened, everything happened super fast, but rest assured it actually completed successfully. And we can always verify that by actually going into the bot over here. See all of it ran, and on the bottom left, it tells me status is ready. I don't see any errors over here. This is why I like to run it directly inside the studio at least once. So let's do a quick recap. First, I introduced you to the concept of UI elements and I showed you how the inspection piece works. In the inspection, we were able to go and see all the desktop items, the taskbar items on the bottom right, including those that are hidden, and also see all the applications that are currently running, all of the elements tied to it in that hierarchy structure that I showed you. Once you learned about those elements, I showed you how you can go ahead and capture the elements that you want. And in our case, we needed two of them the Word document and the file explorer. We then went and added four actions using those elements. First one was to go and open up the temp folder and second was to wait. Third one was to go and do the drag and drop and fourth one was to go and close it. All of these tasks that we accomplished with zero line of code is something that you could also do using the PowerShell script, but you need to know how to use that code over there. In this case, absolutely no code. So hopefully this video got you excited, not just for the UI element feature, but the entire robotic process automation that comes with Power Automate for desktop. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.